Hello there and welcome once again to the Mayor's Magazine. I'm Mick Cornett, the Mayor of Oklahoma City, and this is our program for June 2017. In our first segment, we're going to talk to Mike Knopf, who's the Executive Director of the Boathouse Foundation. Welcome, Mike. Thank you, Mayor. I think people are pretty aware by now that we opened the River Sport Rapids a year ago, but this is really the first full season. So let's talk about some of the things that are going on this summer. Well, we're really excited to have a really uh, fun summer for the whole city with uh, River Sport Rapids. We have a lot of activities planned. Uh, if you've not been down, you know, we really encourage people to come give it a give it a try. It truly is spectacular. I mean, nobody is left underwhelmed when you go through the <laughs> the, the, the rapids on, on the trip. We, you know, this year we have brought in a lot of international raft guides. So, uh, you know, from New Zealand or South America. So these are professional guides who are going to be there all be here all summer. And uh, for those who have not been out, it's a, it's a full one hour experience. So you're going to have these guides that are going to take take you through or your family through this uh, this really incredible experience, you know, just in downtown Oklahoma City. And, you know, we take, it's in our own backyard, and this is the only place in America you can do this downtown. So we really encourage people to come out. What's been the most popular aspect of it? I mean, some people are in rafts, some people are in kayaks. How do you yeah. break down the use? Well, by far the most, uh, you know, most, most people go for the rafting experience because that is geared for absolutely all abilities. I mean, people have never done it before come out and we can really, you know, fine tune the experience based on whether you've done it or not. And, um, and it's, it, it's just so fun to see people's, you know, their, their impression when they get off the water. I mean, usually it's just <laughs> overwhelmed because it's so, it really is authentic. It's just like being in Colorado or Montana or, you know, doing it in the wild, but you're looking at the Devon Tower in downtown Oklahoma City instead. Um, and it's, you know, it's action packed the whole way. And these raft guides can really, again, tailor the experience and they can, if you've never done it before, you know, we can take it through kind of a, a more a easier route as you go down than if you've done it or you're ready to ramp it up a little bit. They can go backwards and sideways and spin <laughs> and, and it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, the, you know, the other thing I'd mention too is because of the, how, you know, we really have about the most advanced whitewater facility in the world right now. So we can can really change the dynamics on it literally by just a few, by making a few adjustments in our pump house. And so this summer, you know, what we're gonna be doing is every day at about 6 p.m., the, the pumps will come down a little bit and we'll raise a head gate. And what that means is we're gonna have tubing that occurs every evening and call it surfs up because we're, there's literally a surfing wave at, at the final drop and so we have boogie boards and so whether you want to go tubing or, or surfing on these boogie boards um, that's just a whole nother yeah. aspect for people and, and really creating a fun atmosphere in the evening for with live music and, and food and drinks and everything that will occur every evening in River Sport Rapids and then on weekends we're going to have DJs and just really making it a real fun place to hang out. Wow. And you were telling me before we started taping the show that you have some uh, raft guides from all over the world. Yeah, like I said, yeah, New, New Zealand. They, this is something they'll, they'll spend their winter here, mm -hmm. and then they'll go back home and they'll they'll uh, they'll they'll guide it in their in their home countries. And you know, when you have people who do this, and this is all they do, this is their career. It really is going to enhance the the, the people of Oklahoma City who come out are going to just have an incredible experience with these guides so what uh, big events are coming up of uh, when people get to watch uh, you know some of the best athletes in the world well we're going to have the stars and stripes river festival um, in the third weekend of june this has been a tradition of ours where we have uh, we have all corporate uh, league championships where we have all the rowing that occurs and and rafting as well and just lots of family fun food trucks and fireworks and music and and uh, that'll be going on and then throughout the rest of the summer Every, every Thursday night, we're gonna have activities and music at the river. And then one of the things that's happening also this summer, and it kind of goes to the fact that we are this Olympic training site as well. Um, we're gonna have athletes from all around the country that are gonna be here for a full month training for a world championship competition later this summer. And so we're, we're really looking for the next generation of Olympic athletes looking ahead to the mm -hmm. to the to the Tokyo Olympics wow, and so that, so that's already starting and what we want to emphasize is when you come down again this is you don't have to be an Olympic athlete this is really fine you know tuned to people of all skill levels in fact we had this past weekend we had a 
couple of ladies in their their 80s, you know, zip lining across the river, and it, it really <laughs> emphasized, you know, this is a kind of a bucket list activity for some people that you know you get to zip line across the river or climb the ropes course or go whitewater rafting, and so we we really emphasize it's for it's literally for everyone, but then it's authentic too. You get mm -hmm. to see people who are at the highest level in this venue. And I think that's the special formula here in Oklahoma City that's so unique. Mm -hmm. Will there be any Oklahoma youngsters who are grooming for national competitions? You know, we really do have some up and coming athletes um, from at all levels from rowing and canoe kayak. And we think in the future in, in Whitewater as well. Um, we have national champions already from Oklahoma City. Uh, many of our athletes, our young rowers, are going to be competing at the national championships uh, here in this month in, in June, and uh, we're expecting high, ho high, you know, great things out of them. They're nationally ranked, and um, every year it seems, you know, we've been doing this about 15 years now, believe it or not, but it takes some time to build this culture, and now we're seeing athletes really at the top of the game nationally. And so as we as time goes on, we're going to see, I believe, athletes on the podium in future Olympic Games from who grew up in Oklahoma City. So that's, in 20 that's, and 24, yes. it's, it's a possibility. It's a possibility. All yeah. right. Mike Knopp works out at the Boathouse Foundation, keeping things honest down there. And uh, he's inviting you to come out and, uh, and spend some uh, warm summer days out at the Boathouse Foundation. If you're a beginner, if you've never done it, come on out. If you have little kids, there are other activities for kids to do out there as well. So it's for the entire family, your kids, your grandkids, anybody visiting Oklahoma City needs to see the River Sport Rapids. I'll be right back with more. Confrenient. Con, free, niet. It's the harmonious marriage of free and convenient. And it's the perfect word to describe the mobile app from Oklahoma City Utilities Customer Service Division. Download it free today and manage your OKC Utility account on the go. You can check your bill on your smartphone or device and pay your bill on the run, anywhere, anytime. Free app, convenient access. It doesn't get more convenient than that. Download the OKC Utilities app today the convenient way to manage your Oklahoma City utility account. Welcome back to the Mayor's Magazine. I'm Mick Cornett, the Mayor of Oklahoma City, and in this segment, we're going to talk to Lance McDaniel, who runs the Dead Center Film Festival. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. All right, I'm going to give the dates. It's uh, June 8th through 11th, so this, this program runs throughout the month of June, so okay. maybe it hadn't happened yet, maybe it's happening now, and maybe it's already happened, but regardless, Lance is an entertaining guest and does <laughs> so many great jobs, so, so much great work surrounding the Dead Center Film Festival. So, I mean, this has grown and grown and grown, and I know you've got more and more people coming on board to help you. So We do. Well, so I'm so just going to plug you in and you just go. Talk well, about this year's Dead Center Film Festival. Well, thank you very much. So this is our 17th year. We were, we were founded in 2001, and over the years we've grown from 50 people at a one-night screening to 35,000 people that we bring to downtown Oklahoma City, and we've done that through a lot of great corporate partnerships and community partnerships around the city, and I think Oklahoma City's growth has really helped our growth as well. The, re the Renaissance is taking place downtown especially and so we will be showing 102 movies over uh, 102 movies that's 22 wow. feature films and 80 short films and um, of those I think 21 of them are made in Oklahoma by Oklahoma filmmakers and then the rest of them are from around the world we have the winner of Sundance we have a couple of winners of South by Southwest and Tribeca and so we try to show the best Oklahoma films and the best films from festivals around the country and around the world and um, we've got two Nick Offerman mo movies Megan Mullally's in a movie Judd Nelson's in a movie so if you're looking for stars we We've got definitely movies with stars, and we've also got stuff with a lot of local actors that are great. Um, and then this year, for the first time, we're doing a full virtual reality exhibit at 21C Museum Hotel. Mm -hmm. And so those of you that know virtual reality, where you put on the mask, mm -hmm. well, these are actually like five to six minute films where you'll put on the virtual reality mask and then um, or the headsets, and then there will be eight of them at 21C Museum Hotel, and that'll be all day Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, um, which I guess is the 9th, 10th, and 11th of right. June. And, then, um, and one thing that is taking place the whole month is for the first time we're doing a pass perk deal with a lot of local businesses because we're trying to figure out how do we engage with businesses that aren't at a place where they can do corporate sponsorships and so we had 38 different businesses from Midtown to Bricktown sign up and so you can take your dead center pass and go into um, any of these businesses and get perks the whole the entire month of June. 
Very nice. Yes. Okay, so what's a ticket cost? A ticket, so it's $10 to get into one movie and it's $150 to get into every movie and to go to all the events. And um, mm -hmm. But we also do a lot of free stuff. So we're doing a free screening of the 20th anniversary of Hype, which is the documentary about, about Soundgarden and Nirvana and Pearl Jam about gr the grunge movement. Mm -hmm. And then we're doing two free kids fest, one at the museum at one Har and one at Harkins on Saturday and Sunday, where you can take your kids for, for from three to 11 years old and they can see these, these movies that are animated and some documentaries, but they're really, really great. And then um, we have the director of Trolls coming in, to t and he's from Oklahoma City, Putnam North. His name's Mike Mitchell, and he'll talk about how they make animated features. And then we also have Judd Nelson will talk about how you, um, how you, how you act and, as a leading man. And our goal is to provide free film classes at ACM at UCO all day on Saturday the 10th. So every hour on the hour, there will be a different class. One will feature Ju you know, Judd Nelson. One will feature this guy, Mike Mitchell. One will feature Junie Lowry Johnson, who's the, the most awarded casting agent in history, and she went to Harding High School here. So we bring in a lot of cool Oklahomans to bring them back and get them involved with the, the film community here. Well, that's fantastic. It's great. Yeah. yeah. And so in, in, the, in the past, uh, you guys have, have, uh, have, have done some pretty spectacular things, launching careers. Yes. And can you talk about some of the successes of people well, that may have started with your Well, I'll tell you person? someone that I think the person I'm most proud of right now um, is um, Booney, Booney Tomlinson is a kid from Edmond who, um, who's an immigrant from Romania. He was adopted here, as, uh, kind of adopted later in life and um, by a family in Edmond. And he started coming to Dead Center as a, um, as a junior high student. And so he had three or four films in junior high that got into the Kids Fest, and then he had a few in high school. And now he's, he's just graduated college this week. He went to the Cannes Film Festival last year with a film. And he's an example of if you provide people a platform where they can show their work and get better over time, they become awesome. And he has just been exploded into the scene. I think he's going to be a wonderful filmmaker moving forward. And so Booney is, I mean, there, there are other stories, but Booney is probably the most, the most um, interesting to me. And he's just been, he's a great kid and deserves all the success he can get. Is there a way to track where people come from to, to view the movies? Because it's, it's obviously your audience is a lot larger than just the city limits. Well, exactly. So we used to be pretty, pretty uh, just about Oklahoma audiences. And now I would say a third of our audience is coming from outside of the, from outside of the state. And we get a lot of people driving in from Tulsa and from Lawton and from different areas of the state to see specific movies mm -hmm. and then we get about a third of the people are coming from regional from Texas and Arkansas and Kansas because we really are the biggest regional um, film festival the, um, South by Southwest in Austin is massive, mm -hmm. but um, but outside of that we really are kind of the biggest in this eight straight er in this eight state area. So. Yeah. And um, I'm guessing there's an economic impact. There's an economic are, impact. Are you so, properly appreciated by the, well, by the, yes. by well, the, the tourism well, what, department? We, we, they couldn't be nicer. We were honored with the Hometown Hero Award um, last mm -hmm. week, and so the CVB has been fantastic to us. And um, we we get about we have been at about 4.5 million for the for the four day weekend, and I think it'll probably go up to about 5.2 because a lot of that is based on the number of hotel rooms that you're reserving. Like that's the easiest metric to figure out. And every year we get more and more hotel rooms sold. And so our goal is for our um, our film festival to be as positive as possible for the city of Oklahoma City and for the state of Oklahoma, both bringing in tourists and also bringing in positive energy and positive accolades for what's going on. All right. Well, there must be a website where people can there get more is. information. Yes. So it's called, it's at deadcenterfilm.org, and you can see the full schedule. You can see all the films we're playing. You can also hear about our year-round education program. So we go to 30 high schools every fall for free to do free film classes. And um, and so there's a lot going on. The festival is June 8th through 11, and you can find all about it at deadcenterfilm.org. Org. All right, deadcenterfilm.org. Lance McDaniel with the Dead Center Film Festival. It's coming up June 8th through 11th in downtown Oklahoma City at several different sites. So if you're a film buff, you cannot miss that weekend, June 8th through the 11th in Oklahoma City. Lance, thanks. Thank you very much. More on the Mayor's Magazine when we get back. Coach Switzer here to help you put the blitz on mosquito-borne diseases. This is something my family knows a lot about. My son Doug got West Nile virus, and it's not easy to beat. Here's my mosquito defense playbook. Drain standing water, protect your skin with deep repellent, and wear long clothes when outside. Make sure your window screens are in good shape. Join the team. Report stagnant water to Oklahoma City and City County Health. Welcome back to the Mayor's Magazine. I'm Mick Cornett, the Mayor of Oklahoma City. And in this segment, we're gonna talk about a very exciting project in the northeast part of the city. And uh, Gina Shofala is here, along with um, uh, Ron Bradshaw, and they've been the, I guess, the primary developers. Is that the best term? Correct. Developers, promoters, right. and probably all of the above. Right. But it's a, it's an amazing project, and uh, it's uh. the old Paige Woodson uh, High School, 
Um, and uh, for a long time it was boarded up and not something the city had much to be proud about and now it has turned around and you can see it's going to be the catalyst for a very exciting neighborhood uh, uh, expansion. So thanks to both of you first of all. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks Ron, for having us. Um, Thank you. That building's been there a long time. Do you remember the first time you had an idea that maybe you'd want to get involved in, the, in repurposing that building? Well I do. We, uh, we were developing uh, the Maywood Apartments on 4th in Oklahoma uh, and and my son Jason and I always wondered why there wasn't more residential development around the Health Science Center. And uh, we, we knew that Urban Renewal owned a lot of land there, so we started looking at it. And I drove by the school many times, and I saw it set on that hill with the best view of downtown Oklahoma City there is. And um, we started talking to Kathy O'Connor at, uh, at the Alliance about it, and she said, well, the development that, that takes place around it uh, is going to depend on, on what happens to the Page Woodson School. Uh, it was owned by the uh, Oklahoma City School Board uh, when, uh, and eventually they decided to sell it and we bought it at an auction at, the, at a school board meeting. And um, that was about two and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and as I I tell people, and uh, Gina's heard this so many times, Jason and I bought the school, and we owned fee title to the school, but we didn't realize how many people had an ownership interest in that they school. They had an emotional ownership. They had a very, yeah. very deep hearted, deep rooted emotional interest in the, in the school. And, and we've, tried to, we've tried to respect that and get the community involved in it. And uh, that's really how I met Gina. Yeah. Well, Gina, tell us your role in this ad adventure. Well. I'm project manager, owner's rep for Ron. He hired me uh, actually uh, after a lot of people helped to make that introduction happen and um, uh, Councilman Pettis and Michael Owens and uh, several other people sort of facilitated that meeting. But my role really started back in 2003 when uh, I had just come back from New New York City. I had lived there for 20 years. I'd gone to school here, grew up here, and knew about the school, but more so knew about just the area because this was the area that I grew up in. Mm -hmm. um, but when I came back in 2003, I was invited to a focus group, uh, which led to me actually being involved in leading a design charrette back, in, uh, which occurred in 2004. And Paige Woodson just really emerged as the important. Uh, historical mm. uh, uh, icon in that community. Well, if, if I had walked into it when it was in its worst state, what would I have seen what, when, it, when it had been abandoned? Mm -hmm. So what was it like when you walked in for the mm. first time? It was abandoned for 20 years. <laughs> yeah. It was deteriorating, I mean, uh, graffiti, um, uh, pigeon poop, uh, pigeon dung, everything that you can imagine. Mm -hmm. We encountered fires, we encountered um, vagrants that had been living there. So, I mean, it was really um, mm -hmm. a mess. High schools have event space inside. You know, some have auditoriums, some have gymnasiums. What, what, what did this school come with? This school came with uh, basically a 900 seat auditorium. Uh, it came with an Olympic-sized swimming pool, mm -hmm. and it came with, um, you know, a full-scale gym, and along with the classrooms, along with the phenomenal library, and then, mm -hmm. you know, just the history itself. Yeah, was Ron, were any of those event spaces salvageable? Mm -hmm. Yes, they were. You know, Gina came, Gina was responsible for it being on, was one of the people responsible for it being on the historical register. Mm. And so as a result of it being on the historical register, you work with the park service as to what, how you, de how you develop it. Uh, the auditorium was, it, it was, it was a gym. I mean, it's got a balcony. It's, uh, it's, uh, we, we have redeveloped it back into the way it, the, the, the way it real originally was. So it will be, uh, we're anxious to, to talk to Dead Center Film Festival about having film there next year, but it's, uh, it's gonna be community space. Mm -hmm. uh, the gym, we were allowed to uh, deck it and, and convert it to housing. The, uh, the pool was, uh, the pool was in the, the worst shape. Mm -hmm. it, it, it had uh, had open 
weather in it, and it it was not salvageable. So uh, we removed it, and uh, and with the school itself has got 60 residential uh, affordable housing units, and we built a second building uh, alongside it, a new building, a four-story new building that has 100 that has 68 mm -hmm. uh, affordable units, ones and two bedrooms. So. It, there are 128 affordable housing units there that will open uh, the end of this month. All right. Well, Jenny, uh, how's what's the reaction? Have, are, are people interested in living there? I think so, yes. We've had a very positive reaction so far. Price Edwards is the property management company, mm -hmm. um, and so they have been actively marketing the property, and we've had several community events, and every time, you know, we have one of these events, I mean, we're giving tours and people are, just overwhelmed mm -hmm. uh, that something has happened to the building, that it's no longer just sitting there vacant, that it's actually been repurposed. And the emotional um, mm -hmm. response that we get from the community is, has been extremely positive. Is there a website where people could get information if they chose to see it? Yes, uh, uh, pagewoodsonokc.com. Mm -hmm. And are these for sale or rental units? These rental. Are rental. Mm -hmm. And how many total? Over 100 and 128. 128. Well, thank you both for taking on the project and, and uh, allowing this, this uh, property to be to back in the hands of, of, of people that live in Oklahoma City. Thank you, man. And uh, good luck to, this summer continuing to show it. And if, if people would like to, to look at it, it might be a good place for you to live, it might be good for some, somebody you know, but it's going to be unique. Uh, there's, there's nothing else like it in Oklahoma City, and as Ron said, the views of downtown Oklahoma City are spectacular. It's the Page, Page Woodson Building. It's on Northeast 4th Street. You can't miss it. It's just south of the Health Science Center. I want to thank Gina and Ron for coming on the show. Thank You're you. You're quite welcome. Thank for you. taking Enjoyed on a whale of a project. More on the Mayor's Magazine when we get back. It's down here. That dog has a thirsty look in his eye. Did you know that it's really not that hard to save water? Excuse me, spraying me on the streets like putting me down the drain. In the heat of the day, I disappear before I can help. So, um, water after bedtime? Hey, we're in a drought, which means I'm kind of a big deal. So save me. Really? Save me! At Embark, we're not just stops on a map. It gets me from my place to my evening shift. I'm just now getting back on my feet, so it's really nice to have this option. Where public transit goes, community grows. Plan your journey at EmbarkOK.com. Welcome back to the Mayor's Magazine. I'm Mick Cornett, the Mayor of Oklahoma City, and in this final segment, we're going to visit with Ashley Elkins. She's the Director of Public Events for the Myriad Botanical Gardens. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I love the Botanical Gardens. It's, me too. it's like my favorite spot <laughs> in all of Oklahoma City. Yeah, it's really fun there. And I think what people enjoy the most is, you know, it used to be when, you know, went to a park when I was growing up, if you walked in the park, you could pretty much see everything when you're in the park and, you know, you had like one experience. But the, it's so compartmentalized, mm -hmm. it's so programmed mm -hmm. that there are several different experiences all in one place. And I think that's why it, it continues to be so popular. So yeah, I think we all have our own like niche that we like. So, the so what do you like when you go over I there? like the Minders Garden and the kind yeah. of water area over there. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like that too. And mm -hmm. that bridge is, is mm -hmm. so neat. Of course, there's the, you know, where Shakespeare in the Park is, yes. is played down in the yes. theater. And, uh -huh. and when there's not theater going on, kids love to, you know, kind of play around yes. like that and <laughs> act like they're singing or whatever. <laughs> Definitely. Um, and, the, and there's those huge fish in there. The koi, uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and then of course there's uh, you know kind of the grand lawn where the uh -huh. where movies show in the yes. summer. I know we're going to talk about all this. Yes. I just I just had to kind of gush <laughs> about it for a, for a moment. <laughs> all right, it says here in my notes the Children's Garden Festival mm -hmm. featuring the mm -hmm. Very Hungry Caterpillar. Yes. So tell me about that. So that's coming up June 3rd uh -huh. when we open. Right. Um, we'll run for 9 days and we're featuring the Eric Carl book Very Hungry Caterpillar. So a lot of kids have read it. A lot of adults say that you know it's still their favorite book. They read it to their kids now. So it takes the journey through a caterpillar into the metamorphosis of a butterfly. Wow. So, and it talks about all the things he eats mm -hmm. along. So we'll transform our children's garden into that and allow for um, 
them to see how he, the different things he ate and how the caterpillars need different foods to grow and, and become so, butterflies. So this is in the children's garden area. Yes, so we close, the children, uh -huh. yeah. we close the children's garden twice a year as a fundraiser because a lot of people don't know the Miri Gardens are now a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. So we actually have to make some income to stay mm -hmm. open. Sure. <laughs> so um, we do that and we charge admission to the children's garden, $6 um, for adults and kiddos two and up, mm -hmm. two and under are free. Um, and then we also encourage people to purchase a membership to the gardens. So $65, you can come as many times as you want during the nine days and then come back to the gardens whenever you want and bring people with you for free, about eight people. So it's a really good deal. Um, and then we offer all kinds of activities. We have crafts, we have entertainers. We actually have um, someone that's going to wear a Hungry Caterpillar mascot costume one day. So you can take pictures with the caterpillar. <laughs> We've got lots of things. That um, will be popular. Yes, and we have local artists that we pair up with, Nick Bear. Joe Slack, um, and they create really cool pieces that help transform our children's garden. Um, Nick Bayer is actually going to do a food obstacle course for the kids. So it'll be made out of foam, mm -hmm. and they can climb through like a giant piece of cheese and a cupcake and all kinds of fun things. Is there a m perfect age for, for this? It's really kind of geared toward ages two to nine, but okay. all ages enjoy it. Um, most of the time the parents have more fun than the kids. <laughs> okay, then there's something called the full moon bike ride and run. What's, yes, what's so we've been doing that for a couple of years and we literally encourage people on the full moon to come down to the gardens and Schlegel Bikes and Ultramax Sports help us with this. And um, so Ultramax Sports does the 5k portion of the evening so you can run around downtown and come back and you can hop on your bike and ride with Steve and everybody down to the river so and you do is there like one night each time uh -huh. there's a full moon yeah so then it's the next one coming up we had to cancel the last one for weather but the moon didn't become full or <laughs> right <something>. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was actually raining and storming so <laughs> but um, the next one is coming up June 7th and it'll be 8 p.m. for the run and 8 30 for the ride how fun yeah and um, and if you're unclear about what mm -hmm. day that's on what's the best way to find out um, MiriGardens.org or Facebook. We're all yeah. over social media. <laughs> you know, growing up, we always had a calendar up on the right. wall. It always had the moons on there. You know, it never right. really, it never really affected my life, but now it would. Yes. Now, yes. <clears throat> need that calendar. Mm -hmm. All right, Father's Fun Run, June seventeenth. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a Father's Day event. Yes, it is. We're doing it the day before Father's Day, so we didn't want to confuse everyone. <laughs> so it's a Saturday. Yes, it's that Saturday before. We're going to start about eleven o'clock, and actually, just um, about three times around the gardens perimeter is a a 5k huh. so we're going to encourage them to do that and then we'll have some other activities we're actually going to do some fun relay games we're going to do like watermelon co eating contest and three-legged race so you can pair up with your dad and yeah. we've got some fun prizes actually Fassler Hall donated some passes so you can win dinner at Fassler Hall or Dust Bowl and we've got some other prizes we're getting together so it's just a fun day um, with dad to do some quality time things Sounds give him fun. the gift of quality time yeah all right, Sonic Summer Movies returning June 21st. Yes, so every Wednesday night, starting June 21st, um, we have a movie on the Great Lawn. So it's free because of Sonic, they're awesome, and help sponsor that. And so the first one is actually Sing. It's an animated movie that came out recently. We're showing Karate Kid, we're showing Fantastic Beasts, we're showing um, 42, the Jackie Robinson story. It's just a great mix, and there's six total movies, and it runs through the end of July. That's every Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. right. And we start the movie at 9 o'clock. People get there, though, as early as 6 o'clock to get a good seat. Got to get a good spot. Yeah, Bring we, your lawn chair. Yep. We um, do lawn chairs on one side, blankets on the other, so you don't block each other's view. And we have food trucks. And then our new restaurant, Pitchfork, will also be there selling soft serve ice cream and all their goodies. Wow. All right. And then International Mud Day. So that's the end of June, June 29th. It's on a mm -hmm. Thursday. Literally, it's Worldwide International Mud Day. Really? You didn't just make that nope. up? Nope. Okay. <laughs> so we started off at 11 o'clock in the morning, and we literally full, fill baby pools with mud and let the kids have at it. They, you know, make mud castles. They mm -hmm. make mud houses. They make brick mud, you know, <laughs> they do whatever they want basically. <laughs> and then um, with some guidance. Right. And then we have some clay activities too that they can make little clay, clay critters to take home. And um, so Minic Materials is great and they donate a ton of dirt to us and we just water it wow. down and make and some you, mud. And you wash the kids down. Uh huh. And done. Yeah. And so, and we're actually going to also do an evening portion because it is on a Thursday. So there's a lot of parents last year that said, I couldn't come. I have work. So we're going to do a six to eight o'clock kind of adult family friendly 
portion of the evening. Very so nice. You can come twice well, and play in the mud. This is so much fun. Congratulations on all of these events. Thanks. Ashley Elkins is the Director of Public Events at the Myriad Botanical Gardens, and she's encouraging you to buy a membership, $65. Yep. Mm -hmm. Is that for the family? Yep, that's up to eight people. It's a great deal. You can't beat that. Most of the experience at the Myriad Botanical Gardens is free, but of course mm -hmm. they do have to raise some funds to keep some of their operations going. Ashley, thanks very much. Thank you. All right. It's a great time to be in Oklahoma City. I'll see you next month on The Mayor's Magazine.